Welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So today I am making abstract art on the gel plate using water and paper to make textures. So I'm doing lots of thin layers and I'm not using stencils or stamps or anything complex. This is just paintbrushes, paper and acrylic paint. This is the biggest layer as I'm putting down a background. So this is burnt umber and what I'm doing is I'm using a damp, wet damp paintbrush that's got quite a big stiff head on it and I'm really just pouncing it on the gel plate. So sometimes the top of the paintbrush is hitting it and sometimes the sides are. Now this is a paint guard, you could just use a ruler um, and I'm just putting in a couple of straight lines just to add a bit of a variety and make that texture even more impactful. So as well with the, when you're using water to create the texture, obviously the size of the paintbrush, the type of bristles on the paintbrush, the amount of water makes a difference. So I would add in a towel as something necessary because sometimes I use it and it's quite wet and other times it, it's really just damp. So what I've done here is I'm using the paintbrush and I'm just doing slow lines. Now the paintbrush is damp and you find the more you go over the paint the drier it becomes. And as the paint becomes more dry, as it's laid on the gel plate for a while, you do need to go back with a bit more water. But you just play around and you find what works for you and you find the type of marks you want. I'm also going to do, in my next video, I'm going to do um, mark making with water on the gel plate and just make lots of different kind of repetitive marks just to see what can be achieved. We can also draw into them. So like shapes, um, you know, when I make the handmade stencils, those shapes can actually just be drawn into the paint on the gel plate using a wet paintbrush. So that was the first layer put down. And I want to put a second layer over that. And what I'm doing here is, this is a damp paintbrush slightly smaller head than last time and I'm just doing dash marks. Um, I have a tissue there and it's got baby oil in it so it's damp with the baby oil so when I rub that on a bit of paint it comes off very easily off the gel plate and then what I'm doing is I'm going back over all these dashes with a slightly wetter paintbrush head and that is just to add just a bit more texture to the dashes because some of those dashes will retain the texture from the first time because it won't cover all parts of the one dash. And then there'll be a slightly a slight variation added in with the second lot of wet paintbrush dashes. I hope that makes sense. I'm basically using two textures in the one dash and the hope that it adds a bit of variety. The other thing is, is as well, is because we are using water in the paint, the paint stays quite wet. And therefore, you don't need to leave your paper down for very long. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm actually showing you maybe cleaning the gel plate because I made some, you know, I, I just used other papers to clean up some paint. Um, so that has nothing to do with the final picture. It was just me showing you that you don't need to waste the paint by rubbing it all off. You can put another bit of paint on top of it and pull yourself a picture off, a collage paper off. I find it quite convenient just to set some paint at the side on the gel plate when I'm doing this because... Most of what I'm doing from now on is just small parts of the gel plate and it, it's just easier to deal with and then I wipe the blob of paint off. 
You may have noticed at the start of the video I had a couple of rulers round the side of the gel plate. That was my failed attempt to make a registration plate to try and position the paper to go on the same way each time. It was a failure. <laughs> Back to the drawing board. Anyway, so what I'm doing here is this paintbrush is damp, quite dry damp. And I'm putting these dashes down and you can see they're actually a bit thicker at the top than they are further down. So I'm going over them again and I'm trying to make them. The intention was to make them all more or less of the same thickness. But what happens is the further down I go, the more of a rectangle kind of dash these circles become. And I prefer it that way. Now these would also be good to use with stencils and stamps and everything else that we do on the gel plate. It doesn't need to be confined to, you know, oh, we're just using the paintbrush today. It's just that this is how I wanted to do this picture today. Just wanted to try and see what sort of variety that I could get. So what happens is when the paint gets wet, it kind of beads out a bit. So there's a slight lack of control over the end shape you make because the water will move the paint slightly. And you can see there that towards the right hand side, these little marks have started to merge together. And I love this graduation effect that we have where they're more separated on the left-hand side. And as you go along the big rectangle, they start to become more together. So that was a nice surprise. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just straightening up the edges. And I'm using a rather complex way to do it. I should have just put some papers down <laughs> and created myself a nice sharp edge that way. But I do that later on. I just think the rough texture with the sharp edge works well together. I should say that the last layer was burnt umber. Then I used raw umber and now this is burnt sienna. Or it could have been raw umber then burnt umber and now we're using burnt sienna. There's three varieties of brown that I've used so far. <laughs> So what I'm doing here is, it's a lot of trying to look at the picture and then trying to think, where do I want this to be? So I'm creating composition as I go and I'm building the picture as I go and I'm thinking, where, you know, where... I felt that I now have three kind of vertical rows, no horizontal rows of different textures and patterns and I thought that's quite good but I didn't want them all just to be the length of the picture so this is the same paint that I lifted off and um, the gel plate for the last one and I'm using quite a wet paintbrush but it's just a very small paintbrush you know one that you do more detailed work with and I'm just doing these circles and you can see that there's a lot of beading and that's because the paintbrush is so wet. So the wetter the paintbrush, the less control you have over the pattern that you're making. And I like that. I like how these circles are disappearing. The other thing is when I put this on, because it is so wet and I didn't wait, it actually smudges a lot. So that's another thing to consider. If you'd wanted to keep that pattern as it was on the gel plate, then you would have needed to have let that dry for longer. So you've got lots of options. You know, you can use a lot of water and then smudge it like I did. You can use a lot of water, let it dry. You can use a, a much drier paintbrush, um, but then the pattern you're more in control of. So... There's lots of options and lots of ways to use this and I just, 
I just love that. I love something that gives you lots of variety and, and you know, you can do the same thing over and over and slightly change it and you get a different effect. So we're still using this Burnt Sienna paint from before. And now what I'm doing here is I'm marking off some edges. I'm just using end papers that I have lying about. These are papers that I add gel prints to all the time. So this is a big wet paintbrush that I'm using and I'm just putting um, stripes of water into it. I would say as well that paint was probably nearly dry when I started adding the water to it. So what I need to do is because obviously these paint part these papers have gotten paint on them and they've become wet, I need to turn them round so that when I put the picture on that it doesn't get the extra paint because we still want those nice sharp lines surrounding these textures. That bit's a bit fragile. <laughs> I think it I think it was a task finding one straight edge, never mind two. So I think I was getting a bit brave um putting the paper down without checking it through the jelly plate first. So I basically I've kind of marked off sort of strong areas with those different burnt sienna and umber paints. And now what I'm using is yellow oxide. And most of the paint I use today is actually come from little tubes that are nearly empty and I've cut the top off them. Because I'm a bit of a miser and I don't want to throw away leftover paint. And they actually have quite a lot of paint in them when you open them up. Anyway... This is yellow oxide and I'm just taking off some of the excess paint that I put down with that baby oil tissue. It's just tissue paper with baby oil poured onto it. So I used quite a lot of water to make that yellow oxide circle. Now this is going to stand out a lot because obviously we've used kind of brown and reddy brown tones so far. So this is the first introduction of yellow. And what I did with the circle is I've tried to make it thicker at one end and narrower at the other end. And I've positioned it around that smudgy area, but slightly overlapping into the sort of vertical smudgy square on the left hand side. So they're connected. Now this is that yellow oxide paint again and I'm making some vertical stripes quite um, sharp, sort of, you know, quite thick paint. But what I'm doing is I'm just flattening them out slightly and taking some of the excess paint off because I feel that with the kind of textures and the more delicate look of the painting so far, it would have been too much. So I'm just using the very thin, wet paintbrush again, adding some water and this will just soften them slightly more but I still want them to be quite um you know quite a quite rigid looking because what I found with this painting is I get a kind of slightly urban man-made with a kind of natural aspect to it almost like a park within the middle of a town or a city So this is light pink. I actually really love this colour. I think with the sort of more earthy colours like the yellow oxide and the sienna and the umber, that it works really well with them. 
it's not like a childish pink. So, another wet paintbrush. And I'm just doing these little loops. And then what I do is I use paper to take off the top and the bottom of the loops. So basically I'm creating vertical stripes. But because I'm painting them with a different motion, they're, they're slightly different than I would do them as if, I, as if I'd just painted lines up and down. So it just gives them a slightly different look. So... When you're mark making and you make the same marks but in different ways, you can get a different effect with it and all these things, you know, add variety to your painting. So you can see here, it's just vertical lines that are going to show on the painting. That was a bit of a job picking that up. That's why I left that in. <laughs> So I'm trying to keep the papers in place. And you do see a lot of grease marks on the papers, but that's the gel plate. The gel plate will always do that. I quite like that um, piece of paper that's under the gel plate just now. I didn't appreciate that design before it was under the gel plate. So you can see there, I really like that. Just I, I just think the colour goes so well. So this is a blunt skewer that I mix the paint with. That I'm just... I wasn't even intending to put it out like this. It just happened and I thought, right, well, we'll use that. A lot of the thought processes around where I was placing the sort of shapes of colour on the painting and the size of the shapes, you know, and the direction of them. A lot of it was looking at what was there beforehand because you want a variety of sizes and the kind of edges of the shape and what's within the shape. Even though they're all, the majority are kind of rectangular. So what I'm doing here is that I'm actually going over the edges with this wet paintbrush. But not all of the edges, some of the edges is kept its kind of clean, sharp outline. But also this is quite an irregular rectangle. Whereas before some of the rectangles obviously I used the paper to make a very sharp line or the paint had smudged that much that it lost its kind of outline. I do feel this is a bit like when you make a collage and you glue the shapes, the, the pieces down as you go because every decision made is based on where the picture is at that moment. So this is my favourite part with one of my current favourite colours which is Pyrol Red. And I know that this colour is very dominant and this is basically the feature point of the painting and it does feel a bit make or break. <laughs> so I'm measuring it out. I'm thinking to myself, I'm covering like a quarter of this painting with this opaque colour. <laughs> Although it's opaque, you can there is still slight hints of what's came before. So I'm very pleased with that shape that we've created there. Now, when I've put this down, that is a fluid acrylic, acrylic and I've used this brayer that has heavy body paint on it and it's just pulled the fluid paint back off the gel plate. Do you see that? That's why I left that in so you could see that. So this time I'll use the brayer that I, I keep for the fluid acrylics because you'll see it doesn't pull it back off the gel plate.
Now, unfortunately, I'd let this dry just a bit too much. I think it's because the paint had been on with the first brayer. So I didn't get that lovely shape that's there just now. But I repeat it and I get it. So I'm very happy. Positioning this took a while because obviously it's really going to be quite transformative. <laughs> so I'm like, don't get it wrong. I was very happy with where I placed it actually. And also my intention at the beginning was to keep the painting within the centre and have a border. But actually I ended up using the border as part of my sort of space. So you see there. Some of it stayed on the gel plate, so we're repeating it. And I've also pulled it slight, I've made it slightly longer. So it's going to be cover more of the painting horizontally. And even though some of that paint's showing underneath where I remove these papers. I'm not worried about it because it was dry. It's the leftover paint from the first pull. So you can see I've slightly extended it and I think that was a good thing. Now this is raw umber I think. And what I'm doing is, it didn't work as like I planned. I thought it would be like when you do a bit of, um, oh, what do you call it? I thought maybe, you know when you do it onto paper, and you've put charcoal on one side and then you use a, a stick on the other side and the stick lines show through of the charcoal? I thought it would be like that, but it more ended up a sort of smudge. <laughs> But it's a good smudge. So I block this off with the paper, make myself a nice rectangle and then this sits very nicely over the red. We get a square of this raw umber sitting over the top of the red. I think it brings the red right into the painting and it didn't really show up over the other paints. I just think it was the thing that made this painting. You know, there's always kind of something you think, right, oh, that, that, that's it. And it was that. I really like how... Um, Using these smaller sections of the gel plate where, you, where I'm separating off areas. And I think that um, is something I should do more of when I use the stencils and the stamps as well. Because it, it feels quite printerly and it feels more, more like I'm designing the picture rather than putting... I have a tendency to just do full layers over full layers and then maybe make a picture by tearing up bits of paper. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to balance out the sort of texture with the more sharper lines. So we've got quite more natural looking shapes and marks and then we've got more rigid kind of man-made looking shapes and marks that's my perception anyway for me these felt like um sort of people gathering in the middle and i do add it out out onto the outer edge a bit what was left I did end up with a gap in the middle of it, which I was a bit disappointed with, but it worked out in the end. So 
So this is the yellow oxide and I'm just going to make some more straight lines. So it's quite good to go back and use the colours that we'd previously used. So we've got them in the background and at the top of the picture as well. Um, and when I'd applied the yellow oxide before, it had been very textured, very subtle. And this time it's going to be a lot straighter and flat. It's basically just very flat, sharp rectangles this time. It just goes on so smoothly and nicely. Probably using that baby oil tissue on the gel plate to, to clean it up every time, making the, the gel plate lovely. Oh, that's the yellow oxide fluid paint. So, I'm actually going to make two rectangles out of this. But I want them to be of different widths. So I'm marking off the gel plate here. There's some flower pulls that I've done before. And this is the last one. And that's it, the finished picture. And I think it works really well. And do you know what I'm proud of? I never leave white space. I always think, oh, it's not finished. I can't leave that. But I did. This time I resisted adding to it. So... Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.